darkness, God will make a way, God will make a way, a little bit of faith can move the mountains, a little bit more can bring down the walls, God will make a way.
Good morning, every nation, the month Sarah. Come on, let's all arise. Yeah. Come before we start worship, let me pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We just come before you and set this time just to worship you, just to focus on you, Lord. Let us just focus on you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on.
creation's cry. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing. Hear your people sing. Holy to the King. your hands just lift up your hands because our God is holy 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 worthy of all our praise and worship we just lift him up just dwell in his glory personal to us he is close to the broken hearted he is close to every one of us we praise you grand the earth has quaked before moved by the sound of his voice Seas that are shaken and stirred can become and broken for my return. True it all, true it all, my eyes are on you. True it all, true it all, it is now. True it all. Well, 
with me. Far be it from me to not believe, even when my eyes can see. And this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of sea. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is Thessalonians 3.16 Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. In all situations, in all troubles, 
in all anxieties, in all your worries, the Lord be with you all. The peace of God be with you today. So Lord, we lift up all these things to you, Lord, that they do not distract us today, but that we can say, it is well in my soul. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, worship band. Thank you, worship team. We are so grateful for your service. You know, they come early every Sunday. They set up, they practice throughout the week. They stress out and then they come here and they serve us. And we're always so glad for a wonderful worship team uh, that serves us. Would you give them a applause? Give them a warm uh, thank you for serving us. Some of you who need uh, fashion tips and hairstyle tips can also look at them. Some of the coolest guys in church. Great to have all of you here. We are going to our next uh, point of our worship today, which is uh, giving of tithes and offering. Uh, you know, every week when we come up here, someone comes here and exhorts you and encourages you to give. And that's great, right? That's great. And today I just wanted to give a little thought and leave a little thought with you. In 2 Corinthians, it tells us that, you know, we come here, we give to God, and we give not out of compulsion. So every week when we, when we are talking to you and we are speaking to you about giving, please don't feel that, don't feel guilted into giving. Don't feel compelled into giving. But I, I pray that every time we come and we say, yeah, it's time for offering, it's time for us to give our tithes and offering, you just say, Holy Spirit, would you speak to me as I prepare myself? And you give because we want to honour God, give because we want to part, it's part of our worship to God, and you give, all right? So that's, that's the reminder I want to give to you today. Uh, as usual, every week we have a couple of ways that you can give. Uh, the best way to give, if you scan the QR code that's on the screen in a moment, you can kind of just give it to your bank, transfers to your e-wallets, uh, and use that as a way of blessing. So I'm going to give you a moment as you do that, and then we will kind of pray for the tithes and the offering. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. And we pray that as we give, whatever we give is going to be used to advance your kingdom and be a blessing to others. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Well, if you're, if you're here for the first time today, we are so glad that you came to join us. Let me welcome you and we all want to welcome you for, for joining us. If someone brought you here today, this is your first time. Awesome, awesome that you can join us. We would like to encourage you so that we can get, get to know you a little bit better. You scan the QR code, give us a bit of your details so that we can get to know you, kind of we can get to kind of say hello and see how we can be of help to you, right? So QR code's on the screen, please scan that. And, you know, after service, we have a little corner right on the front here, just outside here. Uh, we call it the Connect Corner. You know, we'll be happy to connect with you. We have some leaders, we have some uh, ushers, just be able to get to know you a little bit better. We, we pray you'll do that later after service. I'll give you a few announcements for today, basically. Uh, first announcement I want to share with you is that last week we started our series on our mental health wholeness. And if you were interested in getting some of the services that we provide, we have a service called Arini, which is manned by trained counsellors, and they are able to, to kind of help you. And if you want to kind of get to know them, kind of get to know what they, they offer, the details are on the screen right now. You can scan a QR code and get those details. We're happy to be able to connect you to that service, right? Um, so today, um, things have been, a lot of things have been uh, happening over the last few days, but I have an announcement that I want to read to you from the uh, senior leadership team on the pastoral team of Every Nation Church Malaysia. So allow me to do that. Dear Every Nation Malaysia family, we understand that this is a very difficult season for the church. As many of you know, our beloved pastor Timothy Lowe passed away on April 6, 2024 due to a massive heart attack that uh, occurred during a dinner fellowship after a speaking engagement. He was about to conduct a leadership session when suddenly lost consciousness and became unresponsive. Uh, three doctors who were present attended to him immediately. Uh, we also began praying for our pastor, uh, but he, was, uh, not, he didn't recover. Uh, CPI was performed and all kinds of treatment. He was taken to the hospital, but he did not recover. So, Pastor Timothy passed away, as many of you know, while doing what he loved the most preaching the Word of God and encouraging the local church. Pastor Timothy Lowe served as our senior pastor of Every Nation Church Malaysia. <coughs> Since 1999, 
And under his guidance, 14 churches were established across various cities in Malaysia, along with one in China. He was known for his ability to simplify God's word and infuse it with Malaysian humor. But more than that, Pastor Timothy's preaching, guidance, and love touched the hearts of many of us. Now, in this season of grief and recovery, some of our events will be scaled back. Uh, one of it will be the Victory Weekend, which was scheduled. We will be postponing it till the second quarter, second half of this year. So we want to encourage every one of you as an extended family to keep his family in prayer and to support one another during this grieving season. This season. And as we grieve with hope, we also celebrate the life and legacy of Pastor Timothy. We want to thank the church for their overwhelming support, love and prayers displayed during the wake and funeral services and after. Let us take heed of the last message that he preached, which is to keep the main thing the main thing, to honour God and make disciples. Sincerely, the pastoral team of Every Nation Church, Malaysia. I read you that message and um, also want to encourage you that even during this time that we continue to do what is important for us as a church, to continue to make disciples and to honour God. In addition, I want to also announce to you that today at 12 o'clock, we will be having a special announcement brought to you live from Every Nation Church, Malaysia. So for those of you here, uh, you know, I want to invite you to stay. At 12 o'clock, we will be broadcasting live from Every Nation Church, Malaysia. Those of you online with us as well, um, you will also be able to follow that on this link. You don't have to go anywhere else. We'll be broadcasting that live to you. So there'll be a special announcement at 12 o'clock and invite you to stay for that. And we will hear a little bit more about that, okay? So today, um, we have a very special speaker with us. Uh, Pastor Scott is, you know, one of the great leaders we have in Every Nation the Every Nation Movement, and we, uh, it's, it's great to have him with us. Uh, like I said in the first service, you know, he, he, we call him a visiting pastor, but actually he's not a visiting pastor. He's actually a family, pa family of us. And some of you who were together with us in the KDU days when we used to meet in the uh, little hall, 1.8, is it? 1.08. Pastor Scott was there. And when we used to meet in uh, the other side of Sunway, uh, in that wonderful place where... The bottom was the restaurant and the wonderful drain that sometimes overflow. Pastor Scott was there. And today, we are, this, we are in this place. Pastor Scott is also here. So he's really uh, one of us, our family member. And it's so great to be able to welcome him. He is the uh, senior pastor of our Every Nation Church in Yokohama, Japan. He's also the director of Every Nation in Japan as well as for uh, the East Asia region. He's also the director there. So he's one of the leaders in the Every Nation movement. And we are so glad that he can join us during this time. So today, would you put your hands together and welcome Pastor Scott as he shares the word of God. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Alex. I was, I listened to that and I feel at home and I'm, I'm glad to be here with you, even in this uh, type of circumstance that we are here together today. Um, I truly, truly feel at home, and uh, I can say this, your church probably has the best coffee of any church in all of every nation. So, I will come again, yes. I'm feeling really good, okay? <laughs> no, it, it was, uh, uh, it, it's been a very uh, difficult week for many of us. I, I came here... Um, and Pastor Sean, after he heard I was coming, he, he asked me to come and, and minister today. And of course, I'm extremely honored on this very, very important day. But I also uh, know that this is where I'm supposed to be with you. So let me come to you kind of as a father figure in our family and just be kind of a dad to you today, okay? You know, I, I'm also here uh, mourning with you. I was going to come whether I spoke or never spoke or anything. I just wanted to come because uh, Pastor Tim was one of my dearest friends. Uh, he's, he's younger than me, but um, actually he served as a mentor to me. Uh, I have gone to Every Nation Seminary the last few years, and I needed a, a mentor. Nobody wanted to mentor me, <laughs> but Timothy did. And so uh, we would talk all the time. We didn't talk much about the seminary, but we talked about what's going on in life, in my life, his life, and, uh, you know, several times uh, a month we talked to each other. And so losing Timothy, who I traveled the world with, because we were both leaders of the Asian uh, 
team. And so a lot of times I spent more time with Timothy than I did with my own wife. So it was a, it's a great loss. So I wanted to come for myself. I wanted to come and mourn with you and weep with you and cry with you and be with this family. So just know that all the churches in Japan and all over Asia, I'm sure all over the world, especially all over Asia, they are praying much for you. And I know in a, in a crowd like this, some of you, you know, you didn't know Pastor Timothy very well. Some of you, you wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. And, uh, and so we come from different levels. But if we step back a moment and just say, uh, God took one of our heroes. God took, in a sense, to all of you, kind of your, he took your father. And uh, it's important that we don't rush through it. I, I love that song, through it all, through it all. And that, that word through is vital. We go through this. We can't go around it. We can't go over it or under it. We go through it together. But the promise is, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed. That's a strange word for mourning. Blessed. Why? Because in the midst of, only in the midst of mourning, do you understand that God sends his comfort he sends, you, you know the Greek term, right? We talk about it, parakaletos, the, the great helper who comes aside of us, the Holy Spirit. Only in mourning can you experience some of that. So don't go through it too quick. It's supposed to hurt. Death is our enemy. As much as we know Timothy is with Jesus and dancing on the streets of gold right now, it hurts. When you think of Teresa and her children, it hurts. When you think of the, the Patron Church and, and, and think about yourself, it hurts. I mean, you just think of your leaders, think of your pastor, just the pain that he's going through. You know, his closest, closest man in his life is gone. Now, I want us to just stop a moment and, uh, and just experience some touch of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Um, before I do, this is my family, just so you can understand that I am married, I have children, I have grandchildren. Um, my, my daughter uh, is the one in the middle. Next to her is her husband, Skek, who has ministered here in your church before, but it's been a few years, and those are my two grandchildren. Uh, that, uh, in, in fact, my wife and I have been taking care of them all week, because Skek and Sarah are ministering our churches in Guam and Saipan this weekend. And then on the other side is my youngest daughter, uh, Irene, who works for our Every Nation Church in Singapore. And her husband is, is a Singaporean. So I have a daughter with a last name called Pole. So it makes me related to some of you, I think, right? Yeah. Um, so it brings me to your part of the world more, which I'm happy to be. I have a little new, new little baby granddaughter called Eliza. And so we'll stop because I get talking on that. We won't finish all day. Um, let's get into the Bible because I, I feel that the real healing... And the real comfort will always come from the Word of God. Sometimes we take the, the Word and we, we read stories and stuff and just think it's something that happened 2,000 years ago and it's a historical document. But I'd like us to, to go to Acts chapter 12 today. And this is a story that uh, oftentimes the first part of this story is we rush through. But uh, I, I think you'll, you'll see as we get into it why I'm calling this title of this story, Sometimes You Die. Sometimes You Die. In Acts chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2 is some verse that we often speed through and go to verse 3. But verse 1 and 2 says, It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. Verse 2, he had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. That's our verse today. Not a real happy verse, but uh, it, it's the Bible, right? We need to stop for a moment and, and really contemplate what was going on about that time. About that time, if you read the chapters prior to that, of course, they had gone through the, the persecution and Stephen had been martyred and and a beautiful, wonderful message that he preached. And, and, but, but that didn't happen for Stephen. Stephen never had a chance to even preach. It just says, and his head was chopped off. 
But about that time, what was going on? You remember if you look in Acts chapter 11, the, the wonderful widow Dorcas had been raised from the dead. They had just gone to Cornelius' house and the Holy Spirit had fallen on Gentiles and the, and the gospel was going further and further and further and miracles and signs and wonders and salvation and deliverance and expansion, expansion, expansion. And about that time, James, the brother of John, was put to death with the sword. Now, when we read our Bible, we have to stop a moment and realize there's so many Jameses in the Bible, it can be confusing. This James is not the James who wrote the book of James. In fact, that was the brother of Jesus. He's not the, the leader of the early church that we read about later on in Acts 19 and all these kind of places. He, 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 that was also James, the brother of Jesus. This is a different James, but you all know who he is. Because whenever you read the Bible, Jesus always had three guys with him all the time. Remember their names? Peter, James, and John. When he went to heal and to, to bring the little girl back to life, he only brought those three in with him. Remember? When he went on the Mount of Transfiguration where his glory was shown that he truly was the Son of God, it was Peter, James, and John. When he went to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane, it was Peter, and James, and John. When he resurrected, and then that night when he appeared to his disciples, James was there. The Sea of Galilee. James saw him go up to heaven. James was there on the day of Pentecost. He was one of the big three, we could say. Right? So put yourself in the, in the shoes of those early believers. Stephen died. Yeah, that was bad. But we still got our leaders. We're still got our, the main guys are still with us. It's okay. We're going to be okay. But here comes James. In one sentence, he's gone. Pastor Tim, in one meal, on his phone probably, because he was always on his phone, he passed away. Not long, just boom, he's gone. And you can understand, of course, their sadness. They're not all super Christians. They're like you and me. You can understand their, their fear. What, what's going to happen to us? Are we all going to be arrested? Are we all going to go to jail? Are, and they also have this uh, understanding. I'm sorry, I did it again. <laughs> oh, here we go. Confusion. Great confusion came upon them. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And I think for us to stop for a moment today, and, and not just for, through what's going with Pastor Tim, in your Christian life, it's not always good things. No one wants to say amen to those things, right? Come on, how many have ever gone through hard times? Right? How many of you will go through hard times? That's, that's life. Rain falls on good people, rain falls on bad people. That's just the way it is. So King Herod has arrested this guy, uh, James, puts him to death. And this, now, now again, this is easy to get confused. There's so many Herods in the Bible too. There's lots of James, lots of Marys, lots of Herods. So you've got to kind of research who this guy was. This guy was not the Herod that uh, had put Jesus to death. This is not the Herod who had uh, uh, put John the Baptist to death. This is a, new guy, a different Herod. Okay, that was like the kings, they were called Herod, right? This Herod was, was known as the friend of the Jews. He was a real politician. He, he liked the Jews to like him because if they liked him, he could govern them easier. And so when he saw that he put Peter to death, everybody was happy. We're finally doing something to put out this Christian cancer that's coming into our Jewish world, right? And, and so he said, okay, this made him happy. I'm going to get Peter. So he arrests Peter. And he puts him in prison, and he's about, he says, okay, it's Passover. We've got to wait till Passover's over, and we're going to kill him too. Everybody's going to be happy. Good for my political career. Now, we have to understand that we are involved in a great, great battle. And Herod, of course, represents evil. He represents a demonic. He re represents a... God is, is with us, but in the back on this other side, there is an evil trying to stop God. It's trying to stop the kingdom. It's trying to stop you from growing. 
And we have to realize that. That even though James could have lived, he died. And that death, even then, was an enemy. Let's catch that. Death hurts. And we think the enemy is winning. Herod is winning. But I want to come today and to share with you probably what these early Christians need to hear. God always wins. In the end, God always wins. And I think Luke is writing this story in the book of Acts. He's writing it to early Christians who are going through tremendous persecution. Their leaders are being killed. They themselves might be killed. And so he tells the story, but here one of your first great leaders was also killed. But also, in the midst of that, there's a, the story goes on because there's Peter. You remember the story of Peter? All remember that. This is what we jump to. We skip one and two and jump quick to verse three. Because Herod arrests Peter, puts him in prison, and he, he locks him up and he puts, uh, uh, you, you can read the whole story later, 16 guards around him, okay? Four at a time. Two, one on each side, one guarding the door, and they're going to put Peter to death just like they put uh, James to death. He's going to snap out this Christian thing. But what does Peter do? I'll read this verse. Verse 6, it says, Now when Herod was about to bring him out on that very night, Peter was, say it together, sleeping. Look where he's sleeping. It's not a comfortable place. He's not on a king-size bed. He's sleeping between two soldiers. He's bound with not one chain, but two chains. And the sentries are standing in the front of him. And what is he doing? He's sleeping. Anybody else have that, doing that right now? Okay. Okay. Uh, that speaks to me. I, I, I think when, when, when Luke is writing this story, I think he's writing with a smile. And Peter was, <laughs> he was sleeping in the midst of that. He was sleeping. How could Peter sleep? Well, Peter had, had seen it, right? He had denied Christ, remember, three times. But Jesus, in his mercy, brought him back to him, filled him with the Holy Spirit. You know, it was Peter who preached the gospel the first time. Peter had this group of people behind him, and it said that they were praying earnestly for him. He said, well, nothing I can do. Probably going to die tomorrow. That's okay. Die, I'll go be with James and Stephen. Go be with Jesus, right? How do I know he was feeling that way? Because later on in his life, he writes the letter of First Peter. Peter's easier. There's only one Peter, okay? Peter writes in his letter. We don't have time to write it, read the whole thing, but he's writing to people who are being extremely persecuted, going through horrendous doubts and questions. God, where are you? And his response to them and to himself, because he himself lived it, was this. Therefore, let those who suffer, we don't like to use that word in the church, but it's true in life, right? Let those who suffer according to God's will, that, that's a big question, suffer according to God's will? Let them entrust, here's the point, entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. And as I was praying for you all this day, this is the verse that jumps out at me so much. Entrust your soul to the faithful creator. God is our creator. Christ Jesus came, died for us, so that we, again, could have relationship with our creator. And as we were singing again this morning, this holy, 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 mighty, powerful God, He's also very, very faithful. And He is with us. He is faithful. I created you. I will never leave you like we just sang. I'll never walk alone. I will never leave you, and I will be with you. So, Peter slept. So if those who are sleeping today, that's okay. You've entrusted your soul to your faithful Creator. Right? Tonight, when you lay your eyes down, I pray that would be your response. I'm going to trust my soul to my faithful creator. Well, what happens? You can read through the end of the story, but it's, it's a cool story because the angel, not only, Luke is right, he says, not only he has to wake him up, he has to strike him, pop, 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 wake him up. 
And he has to get up quickly. Chains fall off. It's like a Hollywood movie. And he says, dress yourself. Put on your sandals. Because, oh yeah, my shoes. i got to put on my shoes. And he did so. And, and wrap your cloak around me. Because he's probably not dressed very well. And follow me. Now, that's a phrase he'd heard before. Follow me. And so, okay, okay. Follow you. And he went out and he followed him. But it's, it says he did not know what was going on. You know, he basically thought he was seeing a vision. He was in a dream. But when he gets out of the prison, he says to himself, he comes to himself and he says, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. What a great story. Remember the end of the story? He gets out, and he, he goes to where everybody's praying earnestly for him, right? And, and he, knock, 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 knock on the door, and they're all, the girl comes and opens the door. I love how Luke writes this. She opens the door. I was reading again this morning. I just started laughing, because the girl opens the door. It's Peter! Boom! Slams the door in his face. I mean, that's the beauty of the Bible. He's trying to get these people who are reading this, who are going through this great emotional impact of being persecuted, in the midst of that, Let's laugh a little bit. What does that really say? God's in total control. But let's go back, okay? Peter is saved. Hallelujah. You've heard that story lots of times. But how many of you ever talked much about verse 1 and 2? James died. But both of them were in the perfect will of God. Catch that. They were in the will of God. So let's go back to that early church and while they're going through this and they're thinking about James and while you are here and thinking about losing your loved ones, losing your beloved pastor and leader of the whole Malaysian movement as I cry with you of losing my dear, dear friend. Let's not pretend that the feeling isn't there. Separation hurts. If you've lost a family member, your parent, some of you have lost your spouse. My God, if you've lost your child, it rips your soul out. David lost his child. David uh, went through horrendous, horrible things. And, and, and why do we find comfort in the Psalms? Because David talks like this. He says, awake, O Lord, why do you sleep? Of course, God's not sleeping. He says, rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and our oppression? I said, your Bible. You remember later on, er, er, earlier he writes this in Psalms 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. Come on. These are real prayers. They're not prayers of doubt. They're not prayers of blasphemy. They're prayers of of a little child climbing up on their daddy's lap and banging him on the chest. My daddy, 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 what's going on? And you do it and do it and do it until you're so exhausted and you realize that his chest is right there and his arms are all around you and even if I don't have the answer my father holds me and looks and says now you okay you ever notice that in reading David's writings it always ends and says but I will put my trust in God I want us to just stop this morning church and let's not pretend everything's okay why why It's okay to ask that question. God does not get offended. In fact, Jesus said to John the Baptist when he he was deeply offended by what Jesus was doing, John the Baptist is about to get his head chopped off, right? And he sends his disciples and he says, find out, is he really the one? Is he really the one? And Jesus says, see, I've healed the, the lame. I've opened the blind's eyes. I've cast out the demons. Now go back to John and say this. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. See, we have our choice. We can choose to be offended, and I'm sorry to say so many people do, and they walk away. Or we can choose to say, I will not be offended, I will choose instead the miracle. 
I made a choice young days of my life. There's many things that have happened in my life that I could be offended at God. But I've decided, no, I will not choose the offense. I will choose the miracle. Say amen to that. Let me finish three quick things, real practical. Number one, perspective. This is what will help you through your hard times, help you even in this grieving right now. We need to get the perspective that there are things in life we will never understand, and it's been in the Bible from the whole time. Jesus himself died on the cross saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, right? He used the words of David. Abraham died never seeing the multitudes that God had promised him. There's story after story. The people of Israel were 430 years slaves in Egypt, right? We read it in our Bible. It's just a page. It doesn't seem that long, but think of that, 430 years. And so in the book of Hebrews, when it talks about the great heroes of faith, one of the, it ends up in there and says, these all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar. We need that perspective. I may see it, I may never see it in my lifetime. But hey, Abraham's descendants are sitting in this room right now. Hey, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But three days later, he's risen from the dead. We need perspective and the long view. God is the long view. Amen. The second thing is we need to understand the sovereignty of God. This is not just a, a, a you know, as pastors, sometimes we, we say, yeah, God is with you. You're going to be all right. God's in charge. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. And, and, and uh, we kind of give a canned comfort. But today, can we just step back a few minutes, or a few steps, and say, hey, um, it's not can. He is with us. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. For as far as the heavens are higher than the earth, and my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. This is, came to me as a young man, and I understood I'm never going to understand what God is doing. There's going to be questions until the day I die, but that's okay because my God is the sovereign God. Go back to what Peter said. I'm going to entrust my soul to this faithful creator. Right? When you came to Jesus, you just felt his love. When you came to Jesus, you felt forgiven. When you came to Jesus, you were given a future and you were given a hope. And then a few years may pass by or some just a few weeks, I don't know. And then you have this chance to be offended by God. But then you need to step back and say, no, I'm not going to be offended. I'm going to entrust my soul to my faithful creator. Say amen. What happened to that early church? Well, the next few verses talk about it. Peter comes back. It expands, grows. James was that seed that fell into the ground and multiplied the church. The blood of the martyrs is the seeds of the gospel, right? But the word of God increased and multiplied, and it multiplied, and it multiplied, and here we are today. My third, number one was perspective, right? See from God's point of view. Number two, never forget He's totally in control, sovereign God. And the last one is the most simple one, and this is not a can answer. This is our reality. I'll never walk alone. I'll never walk alone. Through it all, through it all, you can understand when Jesus is about to go back to heaven, the fear in those early disciples, and he looked at them, and his final, final word while he was on this earth was this. I am with you always. And in the midst of your hardest times, in the midst of your grieving, in the midst of your struggles and your questions, you know, bang on his chest, it's okay, because then he puts his arms around you and says, I am with you, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, whether you feel it or you don't, I am there. Amen? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that we could come together as a family today. And you've allowed me to come here as a part of this family. 
Pastor Alex said that earlier. That was, that was not just a nice statement. I, I am this family. We are together. That we can go through this together. To not get alone and get bitter and to get offended. That's the most stupid thing is to try to go through this alone. We go through it together. We don't know tomorrow. We don't know next week. But we do know that you are in control. We do know that you have the long plan. And we know, do know that you're with us always. Or there's some here today who are, uh, are, are just coming into knowing you and understanding you. And, and they're even listening to this word. And, and maybe they're understanding what Jesus was really doing. That this was not just a religion, Christianity. But it's a relationship with you. And that we can trust you. And we can entrust our soul to our faithful creator. Lord, help those who don't know you. That this day would be the day that they come to Jesus Christ. Lord, I, especially this uh, church here, Lord, Demsapar, I pray as Pastor Sean is, is in a position of, of transition and helping and going, doing things, working here, working there, doing so many things, I pray for great peace upon this church. And Lord, that you're going to cause, even as it said at the end of Acts chapter 12, the word of God multiplied and the churches grew and the lost got saved. So bless each one here today and cover them all with your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank, thank you, Pastor Scott, uh, for the word. Uh, we are going live to Every Nation Church Malaysia right now. If you do really need to leave, please do so. You can do so quietly, but I encourage you to stay as we go live to Every Nation Church Malaysia for an announcement. Video, please. Is it on? Good morning. Yes. Good morning, every nation family. I mean, I can still stand here. I can still smile. It's because who God is to me and who you are have been to me, supporting us, loving us in this season of loss. I want to kickstart by quote what Pastor Tim had shared with us before, especially among the leaders. A good leader starts by being a good follower. We all remember that, or some of you have heard that. Yeah, he has so modeled that. Under the leadership of Pastor Steve, since the beginning of time, he learned about honor God, make disciples. He came back, he told all of you, honor God, make disciples. Then, along the way, Pastor Steve said, the first minister, uh, sorry, the first ministry as a pastor is towards a family. Then he came back, you started to see it. He will flash his family pictures. Not only in this congregation or, to the, or even to our churches out there. He always do that, right? Then, 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, Pastor Steve downloaded to the leaders when we in the, in the international meeting, say, you all got to empower the next generation. You all have to have your second and third in line in your succession plan. He came back. He started to keep saying to so many of us, Pastor Sean, Pastor Sean, Pastor Sean. The last sound I heard him say that is towards uh, one of the kind church friend in this house who ferried us from the airport. He asked the same questions to Pastor Tim. Who will be the next in line? Pastor Sean. The international official and official best friend. No, it's Pastor Sean. Right? Who is Pastor Sean? 19, sorry, 1998. It's the season of 1997, 1998. His ministry to campus where a, a few of them started to go to Prime College. He was part of the first fruit where I was heavily pregnant with Joel and I delivered 1998 where Pastor Sean was being led to Christ by him. Pastor Sean walked the journey and made him proud. When he graduated from School of World Mission, he came up the top 
Everybody come to Pastor Tian and brag about Pastor Sean. He really made him proud. Along the way, he married Pastor Sean with the daughter of this house as well, Jill. Not too long after, Pastor Sean swan to plant Darman Sarah Church. He released him, gave him all the full blessing and support. The last thing that they did together, quote-unquote, as a spiritual father and the son, is they went with them together. This is Pastor Sean. Right? You know, all that I have said, I just want to land on this soft spot. Very clear. Very sure. He knows this is the next for him. So I want you all to come alongside the pastoral team. Come alongside me to rally behind this man. He is not Pastor Tim. He is Pastor Sean. But we will focus on what God has laid upon his heart because behind all of them is a great God and so clearly will guide them and annoy them to do what they're supposed to do. So, I thank God for such clarity my husband had given to all of us that Pastor Sean will be his next. Thank you very much. Could we have the local pastors from this congregation come up and join us as we pray? And then also those who are part of Every Nation International um, Global Team, Apostolic Council, and also if there's other Every Nation pastors. I know Pastor Kaya was here earlier. I don't know if she's still here. Would you guys come up and... We just start with the local pastors and let's lay hands on them and yes, Pastor Stephen. I've known Pastor Sean for over 26 years and uh, he was my best man uh, in, the, in the wedding and at the same time I forced him to make me his best man for his wedding. <laughs> In fact, it was such, uh, uh, my, uh, my wife became was uh, pregnant with my son, the third child. And uh, because I, wa I wanted so badly to be his best man, I sent Bikim to the hospital a day before his wedding <laughs> so that I can make it to, to the wedding, be the best man, then go back to the hospital to see my baby. But anyway, Pastor Sean has been really a great encouragement to me. And in fact, um, Pastor Sean is one of the, uh, as, uh, as we do ministry together, campus ministry, and uh, um, down the road, as I see really God's uh, anointing and gifting in him, I actually make him to be one of my mentors that I look up to, though I'm much older than him. Um, I, I really you know, uh, seek his advice and I, many times I will update him of what's happening in my life and ask him to hold me accountable in certain areas of my life. So as I have served this church and served Pastor Tim for, I know Pastor Tim for over 30 years and I've served this church since the uh, church um, started in 1991 and I joined the church in 1992. Um, I, uh, I would like to also serve Pastor Sean and uh, Jill together, you know, for the next chapter of Every Nation Church in Malaysia. And I want to uh, rally all of us here to uh, stand together with me to really uh, honour Pastor Sean and serve him and make the next chapter uh, and write the next chapter together. Yeah. Father, I just want to thank you for Pastor Sean. And Jill, God, I thank you so much for putting this couple in our lives, Lord God, Father. And in during this season, God, we commit them before you, God. Father, and we pray that we will continue to be with him, continue to be uh, an encouragement and strength to him, follow him as he follow Christ, Lord God, Father. 
Lord, we ask that you will con- uh, you anoint Pastor Sean and continue to give him wisdom and grace. And we will uh, pursue, do um, all that you have in store for every nation church in Malaysia. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to, we're going to now take a moment and pray as our Every Nation um, apostolic team and you pastors from this congregation continue to lay hands on them and we're going to, we're going to pray. A successful transition proof that this is a church belong to God. This is a church of God. This is a church built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Lord, we, uh, at this moment, we remember your faithful servant, Pastor Tim, who has built this church on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Lord, how we have honored uh, Moses, that's how we will honor Joshua. That how we honor Pastor Tim, that will be how we honor Pastor Sean. Because, Lord, we trust you. We trust the providence of your hand. We trust that the, um, the decision that they have laid in Pastor Tim's heart, it is now being embraced by every one of us here. Lord, bless Pastor Sean and Zeal. Bless their family. Bless their, the team that's going to uh, surround them. We pray that they will be strong and courageous in a transition time like this. Lord, may the anointing of the Holy Spirit be upon them. May they receive the strength from you daily to lead your church, to lead your sheep, to lead your people, to lead the sons and daughters in this house that you deeply love that you purchased with your precious blood. Lord, we thank you for a faithful servant that's standing in this, in this uh, crowd of weaknesses, that he will carry on the same passion for the word, the same mission for the world. Lord, the same deep love for this house, for this family of God. Thank you, Lord. Bless him. Bless his leadership. Bless the things that you will uh, put in his hands to do. Everything he touches will prosper, O oh Lord. We pray for your presence to be with him from this day onwards. Lord, thank you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For Lord would say unto you, my son and my daughter, that yes, Pastor Tim has appointed you as the successor, but know, my son, my daughter, that I have chosen you, says the Lord. Before you were born, before you were formed in a womb, the Lord says, I have chosen you and I have called you at this time for such a task, says the Lord. The Lord says, I have chosen you to be my mouthpiece, says the Lord. I'm going to give you words when you would uh, look for words. Do not worry. Be strong. Be courageous. For I will give words into your mouth, says the Lord. The Lord says, I will fulfill my plan in this church, in this ministry. Through you, says the Lord, nothing and no one can thwart my purpose throughout the generations and generations of leaders that I will raise in your midst, says the Lord. The Lord says, I have found you faithful with the small things. Therefore, I am entrusting you bigger things. The Lord says, I have found you faithful to follow Timothy. Therefore, I have chosen and called you to lead this great people of mine, says the Lord. There's going to be the same charge and the same mission, yet there will be different anointings, says the Lord. There's going to be different giftings, but you will lead my people into the promises, into the vision, the mission that I put in the heart of Timothy, says the Lord. 
Lord, thank you. For you are the same God who have called this couple and you are giving them the same charge. And today, Lord, we install them as the new senior pastor of Every Nation Puchong. Lord, we bless them and we give them, Lord, uh, the blessing of the church and the leadership of this church. Lord, thank you. May you be honored. May disciples multiply through their leadership. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Man, can we give, the, give them a big hand? Teresa, Joel, Joash, Jaden, Joanna. I think from the bottom of our heart, we just want to say that we are standing with you. Uh, I texted her two days ago to say that if there's anything that they need, yeah, my family, we, were, we are with her, and we as a church are with them. We love you. The church loves you. Okay. Um, to the church, Well, before that, Pastor Teresa, <laughs> no, we want to believe and affirm really her giftings and her anointing and the ministry that she has been doing in this house. Uh, she is part of our uh, ENCM pastoral team and she oversees uh, the prayer altar ministry. She oversees the prayer meetings, the victory weekends. She is one of the coaches for the, the life group cluster, the single mothers group and the different uh, e events that she runs and we would love to have her to continue uh, to lead that and to support that and to serve alongside with us. Okay, so, um, and to the church, I am deeply honoured and humbled to accept this role as a senior pastor of Every Nation Church Malaysia. Uh, in the many conversations that I have with Pastor Timothy about succession planning, you know, his version is always a lot sooner, and my version is always a lot later. Uh, but one thing is clear, that it's always been doing this together, to continue to honour God and make disciples. You know, no one can replace Pastor Timothy. Uh, as we grieve, uh, we will remember his life, his laughter, his love. We treasure that. But all of us, every single one of us, every single leaders, every single members, we can continue to live out the legacy that He has left for us to keep the main thing, the main thing. You know, church, we need to be together to support one another, to encourage one another, to look out for each other in this season. It is not to move on, but it's to build upon. To build upon the foundation that Christ has laid through our beloved pastor and to continue towards the next chapter of Every Nation Church, Malaysia. Let me pray. God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful church that we know ultimately, God, Lord, that you said in your word, in Matthew, that you will build your church. And we thank you a lot for the life and the legacy of Pastor Timothy that modeled for us of what it means to love you and love others, God, Lord. And he has poured out that to so many of us, Lord. Father, I pray, God, Lord, that we will uh, imitate Him even as He imitated Christ, God, Lord, that we will in turn with the same love, love you and love other people. God, we thank you for this foundation that it has been laid. Uh, we thank you for the team, for the pastoral team. We thank you for the, for, the, for the life group, for the leaders that is together and supportive, God, Lord, to continue to do that, God, Lord. God, we know that even as we go along, we will figure things out together. But one thing for sure, Lord, that we know that your presence is with us. That we will continue to build towards the next chapter of every nation, Church Malaysia. God, we thank you, Lord. God, we bless you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, thank you so much. I'll pass the time back to the host. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Sean, Pastor Teresa, Pastor Steve, and all the pastors in the house. Um, our service, first service of ch uh, the new chapter for
for Every Nation Church has come to an end. Um, just want to uh, let all of you know that the altar is open. So if you need prayers, um, you can come to the front. There are prayer ministers who will pray along with you. All right? So uh, I'll see all of you all again next week. And uh, have a good week ahead. Bye-bye. The big clap. Um, for our church here, it's very important that you understand that Pastor Sean is not leaving you, okay? He is still your pastor. And, he, and, and we, went and we gathered all of the leaders together last night with Pastor Sean. And uh, um, my role today is to just give you peace that he's still going to be your pastor. He's not leaving you. He's going to be pastor here, pastoring there. Of course, there's going to be a lot of changes. Uh, a lot of you who have just depended on him to do everything, you cannot do that anymore. Uh, we're going to grow. But your father has not left you. He's still with you. Uh, the phrase that uh, was very clear is, he's not moving out. God is moving him up into more of overseeing and enabling, empowering, and I think uh, just last night being with your leaders and today being in your services, I have great, great confidence that this is a healthy place and that uh, the church of God is never built on any man, but it's built on the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ and his principles. I think you're organized properly, you have great small groups, you've got great leaders, you've got great pastors, and your future is secure. So, so be in peace. Um, uh, Pastor Sean, of course, I think in these next few weeks especially just needs to be with the folks over there and keep them calm and keep them stable. Everything's going to be all right. And uh, what he said last night is next week he'll probably be ministering there in Puchong, but two weeks from today he'll be back here, okay? But of course, during the week, and uh, I don't know his address, but he said it last night. He's not leaving that address. He still lives there. <laughs> this is where he is. He, and so you guys should say, man... Amen. We're, our, our pastor, we're, we're going to let that other church join with us. Amen. Let's think of it that way, okay? So um, let, let me pray for you all. Lord, I thank you for this great church. Uh, just over the years, seeing how you have grown it, Lord, from uh, students to even grandmas and grandpas and let, now lots of children. Lord, there is a future. There's a great, great uh, doors opening for this congregation. I pray for expansion. I pray that the word would go forward. And even as we shared this morning, we will go through this morning, but we will come out of it more stronger than ever. So, Lord, bless them. Thank you, Lord, for everyone. And thank you now, Lord, for this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Scott. So, Pastor Scott is, of course, part of our Every Nation leadership, and he's, we're so grateful that he's here with us today. Uh, as Pastor Scott has shared, and also Pastor Sean will be moving on to take on the role of Senior Pastor of Every Nation Church, Malaysia, but he will still be our pastor here in Every Nation Church, Damansara, supported by the leadership team here. So if there's anything that you want to clarify, anything that you need help, you can go to your leaders, you can come to any of us here. Uh, we'd be happy to help you on your way. So we will continue to do what God has called us to do. We honor God and make disciples, okay? Thank you very much for being with us this Sunday. I know we kept you a bit longer than usual, but I hope uh, you have a great week ahead. God bless you. See you again next week.